I'm Rowleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land, doing it every Monday to Thursday with your headlines from Israel. And don't forget that if you want to read our really excellent original content, you can find it on our website at www.layoftheland.online. And we're on social medias where all good people should be. You can find us on Facebook at Lottle Site. On our YouTube channel at The Israel Brief, don't forget to click on that big red subscribe button. And on Twitter at Lay of the Land with the digit 5. And we would love it if you like, follow, share, subscribe all of our content. It really helps to get the narrative from Israel out to as many people as possible. But without further ado, let's take a look at those top stories. And we begin with a very special visitor, the U.S., Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi landed in Israel last night with a seven congressman delegation. Pelosi is in Israel and will speak at the uh, Knesset, or she addressed the Knesset earlier today. And uh, in her comments, she stated that Israel was the 20th century's greatest accomplishment. She lauded Israeli uh, democracy and also reiterated that America and Israel will stand firm together together against a nuclear Iran. The purpose of her visit here, along with the congressman, is not just to show uh, bilateral and bipartisan support for the state of Israel, but to form a united front against um, the threat of a nuclear Iran. But also, she reiterated that her delegation supports a two-state solution. Well, Israel Speaker of the Knesset, Miki Levy, after he escorted her into the plenary, thanked her for her unwavering and continued support for Israeli security and also for ensuring that funding for Israel's very important Iron Dome systems that protect against incoming rockets, missiles and projectiles remains funded. What was really sweet to see is that there were about 60 children from the southern area of Sterot and surrounds uh, who have literally not known a life without uh, rocket fire and uh, sirens and Sevadom. They were present in the plenary as well. In other news, and I find this fascinating, the Jewish News, which is a UK publication, confirmed today that the United Kingdom Charity Commission is launching an inquiry into the funding of Amnesty International. Now, as we know, just several weeks ago, Amnesty International released a very, very biased, one-sided a uh, not factual report alleging that Israel is an apartheid state. Now, those of us who have been looking at uh, these occurrences over the years know that this is part of a great agenda to question and to delegitimize Israel's sovereign status. But uh, the Charity Commission did confirm to Jewish News that they were launching this inquiry because there are concerns that while Amnesty International is registered as a charity in the United Kingdom and does get tax benefits they, and raise their money in the United Kingdom, they aren't operating as per the regulations. Apparently, what they are doing is they are releasing, they have formed an independent company called Amnesty International Incorporated, and through this independent company, they release their reports. Now, this contravenes regulations because as a charity, their mandate is to raise money for charitable works that are of benefit to the public. And there is concern that this report that has been condemned by several democratic countries, including the United Kingdom, and uh, endorsed by terror organizations, is in f a flat contravention of that. The Board of Jewish Deputies in the United Kingdom also raised the alarm and raised their concern that this report by Amnesty International only serves to increase anti-Semitism and possible assaults on the Jewish community. So this is one we're going to watch with great, great interest. Uh, as we always say, follow the money, see where it comes from and see what it's used for. Now, while we're talking institutions that have a bias or an institutionalized bias against the state of Israel, we can't forget the United Nations. 
Now, the United Nations Human Rights Commission have appointed a permanent inquiry into Israel's alleged treatment of the Palestinians. Of course, missing from this uh, mandate is any Palestinian incitement or acts of terror against Israelis. Uh, but that just proves what we've been talking about, which is bias. Well, UN Watch, which is a non-governmental organization which monitors the United Nations, issued a 30-page complaint to the chief of the UNHRC saying that the head of this inquiry, South African-born Justice Navi Pillay, has a history of disparaging comments against the State of Israel. She has not only signed petitions supporting the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, whose stated end goal is the destruction of the State of Israel, but has also made very, very inflammatory statements, including accusing Israel of being an apartheid state in the past. Now, uh, the UNHRC's chief uh, stands by his decision for Navi Pillay to head this inquiry which uh, is a concern, but there is a concerted effort by many organizations to lodge a formal complaint against her position and as the head of the inquiry and against the inquiry itself. Another one we're going to watch very closely to see what develops. And our last story takes us back to television and she's back. Yes, Whoopi Goldberg went back to work on The View this week. Now, if you do recall, uh, Goldberg was suspended for two weeks from The View for her comments she made about the Holocaust, where she said that the Holocaust wasn't about race. It was really about two groups of white people fighting each other. Well, we've addressed those comments here on the Israel Brief and also in op-eds on our website, including uh, the latest one from me today, which is all about the thought police. And uh, when ABC dismissed her, it was kind of just swept under the rug, you know, basically go to your naughty corner and we'll move on from that. Well, Goldberg came back on air and said that she's proud to be a part of The View and will continue to have these important discussions, but did not make any mention or any apology for her comments. I don't know about you, but I feel that it's two weeks wasted, which could have been spent on important Holocaust and anti-Semitism education, maybe speaking to survivors, educationists, um, activists, workers in that field. But what do we know? We just uh, deal with anti-Semitism every day. But as you know, you will get your news in all its honest forms right here on the Israel Brief, which reminds me, I'm Rolene Marks, this is the Israel Brief, and don't forget to check in again with me tomorrow for your headlines from Israel.